Hey everybody, it's Gary Fong here. I'm really excited to bring you this video. I've been working on it for quite a while because it answers conclusively two hotly debated questions in one single experiment. Until now, it was unknown if, conclusively, if EMF radiation from cell phones cause physical, physiological damage that we can measure, and two, does shungite effectively protect the body from the stress? This elaborate experiment answers both questions and then proves them conclusively in the most respected peer-reviewed medical publication from the United States National Institutes of Health. I want to ask though, can you please hit the like and subscribe buttons because it will help prevent this video from being shadow banned. Uh, a lot of my videos have a lot of important information. I have a lot of subscribers, but very few get seen because of whatever algorithms are out there. But it really does help if you hit like and subscribe. Okay, so let's go to this article right here, which is entitled, Mobile Phone Induced EMF Stress is Reversed Upon the Use of Product." Uh, protective devices. Those protective devices were shungite. Um, they took recordings of physiological stress on test subjects using a 15-minute phone call on a Samsung mobile device and tested the subjects while they were wearing shungite. This test was really well set up because the question is, is how can you prove that cell phone EMF is damaging. How can you conclusively prove that? You can say, oh, well, in 10 years, more people had phones and they had more brain cancer than ever, but that's not really a cause and effect. In order to make a really good test, you have to apply a test condition to a control group and see if there's any change in situ, which means that as we watch, can we see a change? And so you had to find, how do I prove that there's damage coming from cell phones other than you know, higher rates of brain cancer or effusive things like people reporting brain fog. Um, we want to show indicators uh, that it's, that's not like the diet or shampoos. We want some uh, a study that is argue-proof. I hope that makes sense. You want to have a cause and effect relationship and you want to be able to witness the change as it's happening. In the introduction, these researchers in the abstract reviewed the growing body of evidence showing how EMF cell phone radiation attacks the body, and it highlighted that the body of evidence suggests that the autonomic nervous system, and particularly heart rate variability, may be very sensitive to EMF due to its role of responding to and dealing with stress. So for this experiment, they used a cosinus uh, portable in-ear sensor attached to the right ear. It's a very highly sensitive measuring device that can detect the difference between beats within milliseconds. And when the body is under physiological stress, the sympathetic nervous system is activated, leading to an increased heart rate and a reduction in heart rate variability, or HRV. The other thing that they realized, cortisol is an excellent in situ, like I said, while it's happening to watch it in place, uh, stress indicators, cortisol is a stress hormone. When the body is under attack, salivary and blood cortisol levels spike. Uh, this was found in a peer reviewed uh, study by Tuatu in 2022, where they involved long-term exposure of workers who have spent up to 20 years in extra high voltage uh, substations. They found that there was a 10 times increase in blood cortisol secretion compared to an age match unexposed control group. So now that we know all of this about cortisol and heart rate variability, how would we design a study to conclusively prove the cause and effect that a mobile phone radiation causes physical stress in the body during a phone call. To measure HRV and salivary cortisol for levels while the call is mating, uh, made within a 15 minute, minute period. So this is how they designed the test. The first test only had six subjects to test how the apparatus work. And they started with an EMF free room, no electronic devices inside it, completely screened and measured for no radiation. It was radiation free. Then the subjects were strapped to a chair so they wouldn't move around. And in the absence of radiation, their cortisol uh, measured by taking dabs of their spit and uh, sending in a blind test to independent laboratories so the laboratories wouldn't know what is labeled, you know, so they couldn't influence the outcome of the test. And heart rate variability was measured. 
The samples of saliva were then uh, sent as unlabeled sam samples for testing, and then the HRV was recorded using the uh, Cosinus earpiece. During the pilot, they also uh, tested tympanic ear temperature and the SpO2 reading for blood oxygen using a pulse oximeter. And the reason why they wanted to do that is because they're just trying to find what can we find within 15 minutes that'll show conclusively that the phone, uh, that the phone is uh, causing these things. And the reason why they brought up blood oxygen is kind of interesting. I've noticed, and a lot of people also probably have, or you haven't noticed until I mentioned it, that a lot of people are gaining weight um, since 5G rollout. And they're also finding that maybe they're a little more muscle fatigued and things like that. And that's really explained by the lessening of oxygen uptake by uh, a heme, hemoglobin, and uh, for the muscles, myoglobin. That's because there is a molecule called a porphyrin. Don't want to get too... Uh, technical here, but if you're really fascinated in the subject, read a book called The Invisible Rainbow. It'll teach you all about neurasthenia, a, dece a disease that is actually caused by radiation exposure, and it is a known disease and classified disease uh, throughout Europe and the rest of the world, but for some reason neurasthenia is not classified in the American or the North American medical journals. Um, but what they found is people that are under radiation exposure have less oxygen uh, blood gases in their oxygen. And the reason that is, is a couple of reasons. One is because the porf porphyrin molecule is a translucent molecule. It actually vibrates when it's getting hit by radiation. That movement makes it very, very difficult for the porphyrin to bind heme, uh, iron, and oxygen together to form hemoglobin. And so in the absence of that, then the body cannot use the available oxygen. It goes into an anaerobic state, which causes the muscles to ache much more because the myoglobin has to combine uh, oxygen with uh, magnesium to and the porphyrin uh, to create myoglobin, which transports oxygen into the muscles. So if you're getting extra sore after workouts lately, that's the reason why. The one thing I learned in reading this uh, published piece was that the um, erythrocytes, the red blood cells, the, you know, the disc-like things, when they're being radiated, they actually stack on each other like pancakes, greatly reducing their surface area. It, it does reduce the amount of oxygen uptake in into the bloodstream. And so they use an SpO2 uh, measurement reading, a, a pulse oximeter, to be able to test to see if there was a drop in the the blood. So they did, uh, and they couldn't find it within the first 15 minutes. So they, they passed on that. But that's what the pilot program was, is just to test the apparatus. Can we see if there's a difference in... Uh, salivary cortisol. Can we see if there is a difference in heart rate variability? And uh, the results showed that exposure to EMF decreased heart rate variability and increased salivary control. Now, those are two indicators of stress. When you have um, a decreased HRV, Typically, that's the fight or flight syndrome, and the body goes into this weird, almost automatic stasis where it doesn't react uh, quickly to standing up, sitting down, running, uh, resting, and those differences are measured in milliseconds, so you wouldn't be able to tell. It's not like, oh, I check my pulse rate after running, and it's this after 10 seconds. This thing um, tracks it to the millisecond. It, it literally um, tracks the peaks of the heartbeat to see how much these things spread around. So if it's like, wow, 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 and then sometimes it's real close together, that's very healthy. That means you have a high heart rate variability. If you're under attack or if your cardi uh, cardiovascular system is unwell or unfit, they have found that the HRV decreases. So that is a great stress indicator, and that's something that they found in this pilot test. Wow, dude, we put the guy on a phone call and his HRV really dropped. Uh, which is consistent to what they've noticed in other people with high voltage uh, exposure. Same thing with cortisol. Now, cortisol is a stress hormone, and if your body is under stress, then you will be producing a lot more of the stress hormone. Again, it's a sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight syndrome, and it throws your body out of whack. So it is under stress the minute that the um, radiation 
hits it. <clears throat> what they also found, and this is really interesting, the heart rate variability increased above the activity observed during baseline recording. Now, baseline recording is the empty room with no EMF at all. That showed that the subjects were under less physiological stress without EMF, but while wearing the shungite, which indicates healing. And the, these results I've known for a long time, but they're extremely positively encouraging to see them in a major medical publication. So once they had the results from the first pilot test to test the equipment to see which of these variables were actually going to show a difference within a 15 minute phone call, they found that they're going to focus on the uh, heart rate variability and the salivary cortisol because they could see cause and effect. Uh, as soon as you, you hit the phone call, then all of these stress indicators start to pop up. So they uh, probably got more funding. They expanded the number of test subjects to 60 individuals, equal number of men and women, and an average age of 37.6 years. Now for the baseline condition, the baseline condition is the condition known as the EMF-free room, where there's nothing, no phone, no radiation sources whatsoever. They tested it with meters, and then they let the subjects relax. Then they measured their salivary cortisol and HRV. For the zero control, uh, test uh, what we call phase. Uh, that's the phone call unprotected without Shanghai. They had the Samsung phone fixed to the test subject's head for a 15-minute phone call and they measured their salivary cortisol and HRV. The protection condition one, um, I think uh, they call it uh, intervention condition one or whatever, um, in that test, the protective devices used on the subjects to protect them from the EMF were uh, custom leather sold insoles and a Shanghai Chu insole. The shoe is insulated with rubber and that is an electrical insulator so that actually reduce the efficacy of the Shungite. But And then they also added a type 2 Shungite cell chip 30 millimeters in diameter which happens to be exactly like ours, which are 30 millimeters in diameter, and a Type 1 Raw Rock Elite Shungai pendant, like this. And I think they measured it, and it was really about this size. I, I'm almost wondering if they got it, got it through my store. Um, but that's what they use. And then um, the 15-minute phone call was then made, but with all this stuff on. And the results were recorded they showed a substantial rise in heart rate variability and a big drop in salivary cortisol. And so they expanded the test to add another variable, which is kind of interesting. So all the same subjects were added another variable. And this variable was, they used the Shungite cell plate and it was visible. And again, because the researchers wanted to see if there was a paradoxical nocebo effect, because that would mitigate the full effect if users are suspicious of the devices, uh, et cetera. Then they added another test where they called it protection condition three. The 15 minute phone call was repeated with only the cell, uh, the Shungite cell plate hidden. So this third one was like, yeah, we'll you know, take the phone call again. And they didn't know if there was any Shungite at, at all present protecting them or not protecting them. And they found remarkably so that in the protective experimental condition three, uh, with the cell phone plate hidden, heart rate variability increased and salivary cortisol dropped below. Get this, the empty room, EMF free room, baseline measures. And this heart rate variability increased to the highest level when the cell plate was hidden. So it, it really, is indicative when you have 60 subjects and they all show meaningfully that there is a cause and effect and that cause and effect basically happens when they can't see that there's a shungite plate there right they're not going to go oh i'm going to be okay because there's a shungite plate and therefore i will be relaxed um they found the greatest results better than the empty room as far as physiological stress was with the Shungite cell plate hidden. And again, this is in PubMed.gov, National Institutes of Health, 
really hard to argue that kind of thing. And I think one thing that's really remarkable is that PubMed.gov and NIH, you know, which was run by, um, gosh, I forgot his name already. It's been three years. Uh, but basically is very much a big pharma kind of influenced by the big industry, big pharma, would then publish such a elaborately detailed test. I guess they couldn't, right? Because everything was there, it was peer reviewed and it was published, but it really is a fantastic new day of hope for those of us who suffer from EHS because now we know, we can conclusively say that it's not voodoo science, it's not quackery, um, like the uh, the uh, Aries Tune Life Touch, and I think it's called uh, uh, the, any any of those little uh, chips. It it conclusively said that they don't have enough research, and that the original researchers kind of uh, messed up the data. Now we know that shungite is proven to in medically published tests, and this is something you can tell everybody to decrease physiological stress during a phone call. But that study says it's pretty remarkable. It's when you have the shungite on, it's like the phone wasn't even there, but you're actually better off if there wasn't a phone there, if you just had the shungite um, in your presence. I think it's pretty remarkable. So you can find these cell plates at my web uh, webpage at verifiedshungite.com. We also have the um, pendants. The, these are called um, ECN pendants. These are 97% plus uh, fullerene content shungite, and those are the exact ones used in the measure uh, in the test to conclusively prove protection against physiological stress from EMF emitting devices. That's really cool. Okay, thanks for watching.